Thank you. Thank you, Ginger. We just hold this precious space that you've created within us, around us, and through us with the grace that you are and the way God moves through you with this beautiful music, your beautiful talent, and we bless the gift that you are giving here today with us. Bless you, bless you, and thank you everyone for for joining us. Uh, Ginger delivered us to a beautiful place to begin the talk from this morning, right? Here we are as one in this place. Uh, really, really beautiful consciousness, and isn't it lovely how we can all admit that we have that same consciousness within us, and we're not waiting that someone has to tell us that we have it, or someone has to give it to us, or we have to go stand on someone's doorstep to get it. It's right here, right where we are, all of us today. So that brings us to the topic today. Thank, thank you, Ginger and the Universe, for aligning that so perfectly. Um, I, I named this talk, which I don't usually do, Am I God? Uh, why? Because we have a lot of confusion about this, and I have been one of those who have had this conversation going on inside me. And uh, it first came up, I promised that I would say something about the Anton Conference, um, and I think this was the most important thing that happened to me there, which is that I had was confronted with this question of people, um, my experience of people saying, I am God, I am God, I am God, and listening very deeply inside me in my head, which just kept tilting to the side, like, is that, what, is that? <laughs> and so, um, you know, all the things that I do know and all the things that are present with me as I, as I feel and experience myself and my colleagues and my friends and my loved ones and all of you together in our prayers and is that we are one in an energy and a loving and that we are one and there's no separation between us and we, we feel this great glory and the great energy of the beingness of the oneness of God. And then the question arises, am I God? And I, I started laughing because the juxtaposition of these two conversations is mainly that they're not two, they're not the same conversation. They're two conversations. One of these conversations is generated in a space where I'm needing to claim that I am something and I am this and I am that. And what's happening is that I, my attention is shifting to making God an object and automatically making it separate from me automatically when I make God an object, it can no longer be me. And then I have to sort of jump over into it and sort of make myself it also. I have to tell you, this is the one of the most challenging inner conversations I've had since I've been at CCL. And I love it because I'm a little shy and I'm a little embarrassed and I'm a little like, oh God, I'm supposed to know the answers. Oh God, I'm supposed to know the answers. Oh, I'm not supposed to be in the question. But indeed, that is what I think part of my very deepest joy and opportunity here is not to be in a knowing place that I always have all the answers, but to be in the question with all of us in the curious question of why is my head, every time someone says that, why do I go, hmm? What is that inside me? And what that's inside me leading me towards, and it's, it's precious and it's intimate, and I'm sharing it with you because you are my community. We are here together, and we are one in this conversation. And if that conversation is going on inside me, I'm gonna guess we've got some, we've got some friends and loved ones in the same community having the same question. So what is the difference between I am one with God I am whole, I am holy, I am blessed. I, in and through me is the presence of this energetic holiness I call God, that is this infinite intelligence, this thing we pray with and through and around and from and surrender to and all of that. What is the difference? The difference, as I see it, when I'm thinking that I am God, it's because I need to be something, to do something, to accomplish something, to get somewhere that I am not. And as I think about it, as I was, as I have been pondering, this has been a three week long co inner conversation, at least maybe my lifetime is, wait a minute, 
If it is everywhere and I am it, then it is not an it, it is a beingness. It is a wholeness, it is a oneness. And there's a great, um, Hafiz is coming to me and his great words of zero is where the fun begins. Everywhere else, there's too much counting. And by that counting is thinking. There's too much of us trying to sort these things out and think them through and force an idea or make something happen or turn it into a thing and then own it and hold it. And then we can be it. And then we can survive this journey called life, right? So instead, what if, what if instead we think to ourselves, what is it like to be one with God? As Hafiz says, what is it like to be zero into the great nothingness? As our mystics talk to us, as we know the guidance comes through us, what is it great? What is it like to be the great zero? Well, what is the zero but the great wholeness of all things? The ever expanding light and glory of the universe. What is zero except that what we think of as the void is this full, and my favorite word, fecund and fertile field of power and possibility that we're all in together. What is nothing but the greatest joy of knowing it as and through and in the holiness that I am? I am zero with the presence and energy and love and wholeness. I as the other part of me that thinks, oh, wouldn't it be great if I am God, is the one who actually thinks I'm separate from God. I'm looking to some, possibly, if you're like me and you had Santa Claus and God confused, some white bearded guy that once a year is going to pop in and give you some great gifts. Or, you know, his son, Jesus. (laughs) You know, God, Santa Claus and Jesus, I don't know what that was, but it's still caught in there somewhere, right? So, as we think about this, if it's that, then I want to be it. I want to be it so much. And I want to, I yearn to have that feeling of that all encompassing love of I'm getting gifts because I'm good. And I'm this and this because I'm good. And I'm, I'm held in this holy place and I'm all in survival mode. And I'm as separate as I can be from it because it looks like it's over there. It's if I'm good, oh God, please figure out a way. How many kids pray that they've been good so they can get some presents on Christmas? How many of us pray that we've been good so we can feel the holiness of God indwelling in us? It's not about being good. What are those beautiful words that always bring me to tears? And uh, Mary Oliver, you do not have to be good. You do not have to walk through the desert on your knees repenting. You are the holiness and oneness of this spirit alive through you and as you. You are nothing and you are everything. You are one with this great divine holy power that is so much more than we could ever hope to be when we're hoping that Jesus or Santa Claus loves us because we're good. We are loved, period. We are love. We are it. We are the love. When we accept everything we give ourselves first, when we accept that we are loved, we have such incredible energy to give to this world when we accept that we don't have to control the world or the conditions of the world when we accept that we just get one job and one choice what is your purpose your purpose is to be and love to be and love to hear the call that is calling you In ginger, it calls as sweet music to grow and flow and press forward through her passionate heart. In Paul, it calls as out loud affirmations of absolute ecstasy. In Marlene, it calls as the beauty of the words of her reading. As those of you who I can see on my screen and I love to see, it calls each of you in your own voice 
to its wholeness, to your wholeness. Because even calling it it, now I'm in the conversation of it and us, and no, it's not. Energy. Life is a flow of energy, the infinite in this moment that inhabits you, informs you, and is you, is your life. This is the heaven that we talk about. This is the full living in the womb of love that you are also creating, that you are co-creating, that you are called into. And you answer that call with a wholehearted, yes, I am here to create with this divine and glorious energetic opportunity called life. And when we choose to shut the door on that. We feel as separate and we beg to be God. That will make me feel better if I could just know that I am God. Instead, we turn and look the other way. We drop any sense of separation. We listen to the ohm that we were singing together, even with our voices muted and Ginger's voices carrying our voices. The ohm is the eternal sound of the resonance of the universe. Did you not feel your oneness? You can go into the chat and exclaim whatever it is you feel when you know that the oneness is you, as you, as an experience, a loving essence, a non-separate place where all of the glory and the beauty of you pours forward. Your identity is that you are a process, an openness, and a love that emanates through and as you, as one in a field that we have a million names for. And what do we know about that field? We know that field meets us, is us, lives in us, surrounds us, and in and through us as love, kindness, compassion, care. Write the words for your own, what you experience in the chat if you care to bring your words on to this conversation today. Knowing in blissful silence, knowing whatever it is. And feel free to stay in the space of zero if the chat doesn't call you. Be called by what calls you. Be you in the deepest sense of you and see that your identity is whole and loving no matter what the world is giving you. Reverend Michael Beckwith, my mentor, my spiritual mentor, always says, the news is a prayer request. It is a call for you to remember who you are as you read this prayer request, that you are the very activity. You are a verb of life. You are not an object. Anything that is an object is circumstance and will easily fade away in the light of the moving energy of love and God. That is who you are. We can all get caught. And the moments you know you're caught is the moment you're having thoughts like, am I it? Because when it is all you know, there is not that thought. The very thought of am I it is the thought that is coming from outside it. So which separation story do you tell? Which separation story do you tell that you are not this great glorified field of activated energy that is always giving, that is always bringing, that is an energy that we call love that is the harmonizing, coherent, and aligned energy of the universe that flows north, south, east, and west? that all the shamans and the indigenous people have their feet on the earth, feel the energy and knowing of the magnetic core of who we are, and that we lift ourselves through into all the mystics and all of the creation that happens around us through knowing the light that is delivered to us from above. And we feel the connection of these energies, neither is one nor the other. 
each contain within themselves all, all that is also nothing. Our brains break when we have these thoughts, when we allow ourselves to go into this conversation of, well, is it something or is it nothing? Is it holy or is it something else? Do I have to be good or can I be who I am and be loved? All these questions, the only question that you have to answer is, am I willing to turn towards love and let myself let go of any story, any idea of separation, anything that comes in between me and that, and to be given, as our reading said today, everything. As the Course in Miracles always will tell you, all you need to do is release. Let yourself see truly the holiness and the love around you, and you will be guided in every word to speak, in every action to take, in everywhere to look for you to be present with your good. You do not need to worry or fret or doubt. And this is the ultimate leap of faith which we are accompanying each other on today. I am not alone in this conversation with you this morning. We are having it together. Your mind is with my mind, my heart is with your heart. And as I speak these words, and as I stumble, and as I wonder what is coming next, I reaffirm and reaffirm that I am one with you in the very presence, in the fertile field of God. And it is happening with us and as us, as we speak. It happens is as you and through you, as you speak, as you sing, as you walk down the street, as every foot touches this earth, you bless the earth from this presence. There is nothing you need to do except understand and choose for yourself the great glory of forgetting any story of separation that you may ever have created. That we somehow come on this planet and forget our true identity We spend our lives clawing through the action of life to try to let everything that's trying to remind us all day long how holy we are, how many miracles there are, the fact that everything in life is a gift all day long, the world and life is trying to remind us of this. And we're like, no, I think I'm I'm the one exception. I'm the one Marianne Williamson said to me one day, do you, oh, it was the day before I came to CCL, do you honestly think that you have traveled this far with this teaching, 30 years of study and a lifetime of experience to get to this moment, to have God take you to this beautiful place and drop you off. (laughs) And if you've ever worked with Mary Ann, you know she has a particular way of saying that that makes you feel like a fool. So I had that moment of humility, which is wonderful because feeling the fool is beginner's mind. It's the place where we don't know nothing. And we're starting from scratch and scratch is zero. So drop out of even that first level of anxiety, of that first level of questioning, of the first bite of the apple, whatever you do. Drop out and back in to the holiness that you are, where the question of I am God is so not available. Because the wholeness, oneness, beingness, and power of who you are is all there is. And now today we recognize that we are, through your words, in this space, in the chat and feel free to add more. We are blissful silence. We are peace. We are empathy. We are peace again. We are kindness, weightlessness, loving, feeling the flow of joy, unconditional love. We are yes. We are acceptance. We are expanded and we are blessed. Nothing else exists. And if you would be willing unmute yourself and all say with me together yes 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 yes
Yes. 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 In divine agreement. In divine agreement with one another. We bless this moment and step into our holiest of prayer together. In this (laughs) moment, in this moment, in this moment, we are love. In this moment, we accept this divine inheritance that there is no separation. There is no place. There is no thing that is not the vast, ever-expanding, ever-creative, infinite, infinite, enduring moment, which is right now. Place all of your attention right here. The holy oneness as the truth of our being, the holiness of our essential being, the vibration of truth through us all, right here and right now, is one. Knowing that this is the wholeness, the truth, the blessing of every, every moment of bliss, we walk in this knowing. We bless this earth with this holiness. We bring into this space of love everything. We join Rumi in welcoming to this guest house all the guests of our living on earth. We see only temporary circumstance and we dissolve. We dissolve anything that is unlike this pure, loving, knowing vision of truth. Every breath we take, every move we make, we are with, for, as, each other in this space. The field is wide open. We deposit right this moment into this field all of your dreams and hopes with pure knowing of love surrounding you. We deposit any parts that are resisting, any parts that are bringing themselves here for the loving because the totality of you is here as the loving. And we hold that with and for and as each other. It never goes away. This part, this part of you, which can never be hurt, harmed, or endangered in any way, is who you are. We bless, we bless, we bless ourselves and our wounds and our healing. We bless each other. We bless this planet. We bless the outpicturing and we claim ourself as cause. That as we come from and stand in the fact that we are love, this emanating energy field, that our world is love. Beyond circumstance that we brush aside the fog of circumstance that was created out of yesterday's thoughts or last moment's thoughts. This moment thoughts are created out of love. And all is brought into divine alignment. Everything is true and holy. This is mysticism where you know yourself as this holy presence of beingness. And both humility and glory we stand, full and overflowing. We are so very, very grateful to be those that have remembered, that are remembering, and we choose to remind each and every one we know each day with the gentlest touch of love 
as we are. With the firmest words of love as we might be. With the holiness that we are called to with knowing in and through us, this is the word. And we release this prayer together. And we unmute. And we say together, and so it is. And so it is. is. We are so blessed. And so it is. Thank you. Mm.